Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar for today, The Local Business Guide to Getting Found in 2023. My name is Patrick. I am your host as well as your speaker for today's session. So as always, we like to go over a few housekeeping items before we get started. Our mission here, and just in case anyone might be unfamiliar with us here at Surefire Local, our mission is to help you make online marketing easy by providing your business with a next generation platform that is available everywhere you need it across multiple devices and browsers. We provide the software that you need to attract customers and grow profits efficiently and all from one place. So today we are coming to you live. Later on, you will receive a link to this recording as well as the presentation slides via email. So there's no need to worry about taking notes. You can just sit back and relax and hang out while you're here. Please do check your spam folders for Surefire Local just in case you do not see it. You can also share feedback with us at any time by emailing us. That's marketing at surefirelocal.com. If you have a question for us here, you can always use the questions tab from the GoToWebinar control panel. Also, please check out our resources page on our website to view our back catalog of previous webinars, eBooks, and free resources all available to you free and on demand. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in today. We have a lot of details to go through, so I'm gonna be going over quite a few bits of numbers and stats right up here at the start. All right, so part one to 2023 online trends and customer expectations, and then we'll move into part two, building off of that is in building your online presence. Okay, part one, 20, the 2023 online trends and customer expectations. Meet meeting your customers on their terms. So it's not up to you to decide where your customers should convert. It's up to them to tell you where they want to convert. So let's kind of get into that exactly when that what that means. Um, in real life, you can be everywhere at once. Uh, in real life, sorry, <laughs> you obviously can't. In real life, you cannot be everywhere at once, which is very understandable. But on the internet, you kind of have to be more or less. Well, that is to say you need to be all the places that are really going to count, which is still a lot of places to be simultaneously. Uh, when marketing at the speed of your customers, manual approaches are less than ideal. So uh, as you know, we are all very well aware technology and the pace in which we interact with it on our daily lives is changing consistently every single day. Therefore, consumer behaviors and preferences are also changing daily. 15% of the billions of searches on Google every day are brand new. They've never been seen before. So that's something to think about. Think about how long Google's been around, how much it is a prevalent factor in our lives, and that 15% of all the billions of interactions that are happening are brand new. Search drives conversions. It's a really simple formula here. People could find you, they like you, you're genuine, they appeal to your brand and your company, they buy from you. If they can find you, they'll buy from you. Search drives uh, conversions. If you build it, they will come. Remember that old movie? Marketing automation allows you to quickly identify which new searches are most valuable to your business given the goals you've set out to achieve. So let's get into detail on what you need to focus on to reach your customers. All right, so we've got a lot of uh, good numbers here. So let's kind of dig into it. Your online presence by the numbers. All right, so what do you need to constantly keep in the back of your mind? 97% of users search online to find a local business. Okay, so that's most of the people before they get to your local business, they're looking for you online. 46% of all searches will have to do with location. Okay, so it's location-based. It's a, a roofer, contractor, Ashburn, Virginia, uh, uh, HVAC near me, plumber near me, uh, what have you, lawyer near me, dentist in my area, so to speak, all of that. 
So almost 25%, so almost one fourth of all clicks go to the very first result of local business searches. Just like anything else on Google, we're all busy. We don't want to put in the time. Whatever you search for it pops up at the top. That's what you're going with. Okay, and then 136% increase in near me mobile searches. So I said before, like roof, roofing contractor, plumber near me, et cetera. People, people are actively asking Google, where is this next to me? Okay, so they're, they're looking to find you and that's what you need to keep in the back of your head or the, the front of your head, I guess, so to speak. Your reputation by the numbers. 88% of potential customers look for online reviews before choosing local services. Okay, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff here and we're not, I'm not gonna extrapolate uh, so much on the very start here. We're just gonna dig into these numbers. You're, you're close to 90% of everybody that's looking for, for you uh, looks at your online reviews and how you respond to those reviews before choosing your business. 73% of customers, so almost three fourths of all customers are more trusting of a business with online reviews. 84% of customers seek out negative reviews. It isn't so much, it's what are people saying are the drawbacks to your business? What are the challenges that they face? And more importantly, how are you as an organization uh, adapting to those to those reviews? How are you responding to those? 86% of customers use Google Maps to find local businesses. That kind of goes without saying. We do that all on our daily lives. Okay, getting a little bit more into the details here, we're looking at local ranking factors. So let's look at what exactly is a local pack versus local organic. The Google local pack is a listing of three local businesses that appears at the very top of the sec of the very top section of the search engine results page. It appears in response to a user's search query if that query involves local content. So uh, near me, my location, my zip code, etc. Then the Google algorithm considers relevance, distance, and prominence. Uh, three points we, uh, we've we talked about before in previous sessions in its calculations and determines that this listing includes the most relevant results. Okay, so it's the type of business, uh, the location, and how well your presence is configured to address those factors. Okay, the local pack stands out on the page, quickly catches the eyes of the searcher, the prospects, and puts your business at the top of mind. All right, so right at the right at the top there, and they see you first. As a result, it can obviously lead to higher business awareness, sales, and in-store traffic. So if you are taking into account those factors, look at those percentages and that breakdown of how the local pack uh, contributes, then you're going to get a uh, pop-up on local uh, results versus the more uh, quote-unquote uh, traditional or a regular Google search that we all do in our daily lives that isn't um, um, local driven, it's just the local organic. So it's just a basic Google organic search. Organic searches happen with search engines decide there's no local intent in the search. The searcher is looking for information rather than a specific location. Okay, so there's no near me uh, uh, indications tied to it. The search engines are then seeking out relevant and trusted content rather than the relevant and trusted location. So this is your more typical sort of Google search when you're looking up uh, and you got a question or you're researching something. This is how it breaks breaks down, and both of the things you really need to focus on. Look at how uh, those individual components tie into each, and what you need to be thinking about in order to show up uh, in search in general, but also on a local on a local basis. Consumer search behavior. So people, so obviously we're all online, we're looking for you online, uh, but long past gone are the days when everyone first went to just, 
they just went to google.com and typed in what they're looking for. Okay, we're, we're well past the point of that and have been for well over a decade. How are people searching for your business then? Is your online presence appropriately optimized to account for each of these categories? So think about how people are on the go in their day-to-day -day lives and they're finding you. First and foremost, you know, you just pull up your phone, maybe pull up Google Maps, you type in and try to find you, sure. And that kind of leads into Google, uh, uh, local there, um, you know, the near me that we've been talking about. But there's also voice. So it's not just Siri. Um, you know, I'm an Apple person, so I've got Siri, but you may not have that. You uh, may be talking uh, directly into Google. Uh, you may have a, a, an Alexa at home. Uh, there's even Cortana, which is the voice search functionality built into your PC computers and your Xbox, okay? So, I mean, each one of those things is pulling from different profiles. It could pull from Yelp, uh, not, not not just necessarily your Google business, okay? It could be pulling from Bing. So you have to, you know, how well uh, is your presence optimized for all those different profiles? How many user profiles or, or business listings do you have? And we'll get into that a little bit later as well as, uh, you know, the, the sort of the basics, the kind of, uh, if we look at visual speed and zero click, um, you know, how do those apply to say your website? Is it, uh, and your presence in, den in general, when it comes to your, your visual presence, how impactful is your content? Is it nice? Are your photos nice? Is your website well presented? Um, if they go to, if they click from your uh, Google business profile page and they click over to your site, does it load fast? Is it optimized? Is it optimized for mobile? And then zero click. What if they just, you know, there's nothing more frustrating, and I don't think that this is necessarily an age thing. Maybe, I, I, I feel like it is. With their look, the one people you want to call nowadays is a business. You just want to get a human on the phone. You're busy, you're tired, you've got a thousand different uh accounts and click throughs and emails etc so you just want to you know if i need to talk about my roof i am going to get a human being on the phone so uh do I have, do i have to click through your website to find your phone number can i find is is all your contact information uh uniform on all your various business listings your google business your yelp etc uh, how easy is it to get in touch with you or is do you you know, how easy is it to put in a contact form? Okay, so zero click, make it simple as possible. Don't make your customers and your prospects think. The one way to look at it. Consumer expectations. So we looked at how your customers find your business, but what are they looking for? What do they expect when they interact with any local business online? So they, we looked at how they're finding you. Now, when they find you, what do they expect? People expect your business to be found online. Mm -hmm. I already just said that. People rely heavily on peer validation. Okay, so that means they're looking at your reviews. How are you responding to people that are upset? How are you responding to people that are happy, et cetera? And what are those people saying? How well is a business taking that feedback into account? People use online channels as a discovery and research platform. So they're, they're looking, you know, there are, you are not the only one. You have competitors, always. They're in your area, whether direct or indirect, and they're weighing their options. And one way they weigh their options is they check you out on what people are saying on Google, what are the reviews, what are they saying on Facebook, et cetera. People want an insider view into what their experience with a business will look like. They want to have, they want to set their expectations nowadays before they even walk in your door. It used to be they just, you know, um, this will date me, uh, but they had a thing, these things called phone books and a big giant books with paper <laughs> and you rifle through the paper pages and you find a number or an address and you just go to the shop and you see what they're all about. That's been gone for oh, 20 some odd years now. No, they're researching you. They're getting an idea of what who you are, your brand is, your business is before they even step their foot in the door. They want insider view. This is just the evolved form of word of mouth. This is just the evolved form of their friend or their family member telling them to, to try a business. Okay, so they're seeing what other people say about you online. They're getting a picture in their head. 
and then they're deciding to do business with you. People want to see results and know that others have found success in your business. So they, they want to feel reassured by someone before they step in that this is going to be a positive experience. And they're doing that by reading your reviews, your presence, and what people are saying about you all online and all your various channels and mediums. Social channels, website, uh, or I'm sorry, social channels, Google Business, Yelp, etc. Okay, moving right along, right along to part two, building your online presence. So all that stuff I just said, that's just all great, isn't it? Yeah, it's all well and good. But Patrick, what do I need to focus on right now? What do I need to do exactly uh, to help build and improve my online presence for my business? All right. So in part two, let's get into the nitty gritty and what you actually need to be doing. So um, you have the you, you have three main categories here. You have the you, the actions you take, and the content that you create. Okay, this is your brand identity. This is who you are as a company. The internet where you stand with regard to search engine and social media algorithms. So that we just, when we talked a lot about how the breakdown and how it all calculates and how the Google algorithm works on both an organic and a local pack stance. So that is the details. That is the tech, the the uh, technicalities, the logistics, um, all the best content in the world, and all the best you know brand to brand identity. You can be great and having all this stuff, but if you don't execute it, if you don't have it appropriately configured on the internet, uh, no one's going to see it. No one's going to find you in your business. The public. That's the third. Uh, uh, component right there, how people perceive your business online, what they say about you and how they engage with you. What's the dialogue? Not just what's your five star, what's your uh, Google rating, but how are you responding to each review? And more importantly, most importantly, how are you addressing the negative feedback? Because everyone gets it. You will not be immune. Okay. Okay. Why is it important to have an online presence. Just one second here, make sure that I've got, uh, I've gotten a little turned around. Okay. Okay, um, why, so why exactly is it important to have an online presence? All right, so let's get down to the basics here. Um, what exactly are we trying to get out of this? So uh, number one, uh, you need to get found online. We just went through that in, in kind of great detail. Um, you need to be found more uh, online uh, easily. You need to be seen as a legitimate business. Okay, that you're 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 a place that uh, takes this seriously and takes your di uh, dialogue with your community seriously. You promote your business around the clock. Um, it is a gr growing, your online presence, you can kind of see it as a growing living being. It's not just something you can sort of, uh, you know, one and done, set it and forget it. It has to be consistently monitored. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You're getting notifications from all these different portals. You have all these different logins. Wouldn't it be nice, maybe a little spoiler or something later on, if you were able to deal with all of this and work from this uh, from a um, one platform, a one stop shop, so to speak. You need to save money while attracting new customers. Uh, the good thing about online marketing is it is efficient. So it is a way to really target where you're going to be. Uh, you need you can you can get actionable data, you can get you can be focused if you have appropriate automation and appropriate platform set in place. You can understand where you're seeing success. Target those areas with your spending dollars, with your advertising and marketing dollars, and get efficient and uh, spend less money and save time overall. You need to earn Google's trust. They're first and foremost, it's their kingdom, and we all live inside of it. There are other areas that are very critical. We've talked a lot about those already, but Google is, of course, the uh, overseer, and we all know that. 
in nurture customer relationships. So nurture, we talked a lot in our previous sessions about the um, the customer journey and uh, addressing your customers at each stage of the customer journey. Please go back and check out some of those previous sessions on that. But well, we talk a lot about nurturing customer relationships and the types of communications and the mediums you use to follow up and, and improve the dialogue after they've already gone from prospect and customer and they've already bought from you. So we'll get into educational content and the type of things you share online um, here in just a second, but uh, it's all about nurturing customer relationships. Okay, um, we are into, I think, um, okay, I think a genuine, uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Looks like we got a little turned around here again. Okay. Um, so here are the five essential building blocks to increase your online presence. We just went through the main components of what you need to focus on, uh, and what you need to understand, but, but let's get into the details um, of how you exactly increase your online presence. So you have the five um, main categories of the work you need to be doing in the areas you need to be focusing on. You have your website, social media, your online ads, your directory listings or your business listings, Google business, et cetera. We'll get into that in a minute. And your continued e uh, communication such as email marketing and even add to that text, text message. We'll, we'll start to get into that. All right, so here's the, the nitty gritty, if you will, of what we need to be working on. First thing is website. So we all know that a lot goes into we, to a website. Luckily, there are some incredible services out there. There are things like WordPress and Squarespace that can help anyone with little or no experience create an impactful SEO-ready website. Uh, I'm not, uh, you know, those are great resources, um, but it is still quite an undertaking. Each one of these areas is time intensive, but uh, building a really good website that is SEO optimized is a time intensive process with a lot of details to take into account. Every business at a certain point can easily deploy a full-time marketing professional. So if you grow to a point, you're large enough, um, a full-time marketing professional to oversee the website, excuse me, in all aspects of your online presence is very justifiable. You can have somebody sit there and deal with this all day long. Or you can hire companies like us to take care of all the elements of your website for you. Okay, not just the design, the speed, the visual impactfulness, the flow, the zero click, the things we talked about earlier that make an important website. Uh, you can, un you know, and having an SEO optimized for your local pack, for your organic search, all of these details. Yeah, there are tools where you can get out there and do it yourself, absolutely. Um, but it is extremely justifiable if you want to go the route of employing a service such as ours to develop and to take care of this stuff with within step with you. So, you know, you know you, the collaborative environment still you, but having your input and getting involved in this uh, and having your website sort of as the foundation of your house, so to speak, is very important. So what are some of the areas that um, you need to focus on? Let's just review those again. Um, modern and attractive, stay up to date with trends. Um, that's why a lot of the good services nowadays, like your WordPress, you can stay up to date with new templates that come out, uh, you know, the latest trends in navigation, et cetera, the format, the feel, okay? Um, it's just like anything else it, in, in your business. You need to stay uh, up and uh, lockstep with the times. Optimize your website for SEO best practices. So that's the, the tech technicalities of, a, of this. That's the logistics. Um, this is the, uh, you know, the ones and zeros of it all, and it can be quite complicating. We, you know, we did the breakdown of the local pack, uh, I keep going back to it, but the local pack and the organic, you saw how all the various factors led into it. You saw all the various uh, percentages and breakdowns of how they were important. You know, you can truly get in the weeds with this. This is one of those bullet points. Every so often we have a slide or just a bullet point on the slide. That one right there, optimize your website with SEO's best practices. 
that there are entire online courses dedicated to that. So it can be a massive undertaking to do it all correctly. Obviously here we try to provide some some best practices that you can focus on on your own so you you know you don't have to spend a ton of money but there are entire corporations such as ours that exist just to take care of that second point right there optimize your website with seo best practices third publish blogs and add photos to your website this is the more genuine aspect of all this this is you your brand your brand identity you as a people, uh, what kind of content are you putting out there into the world? Are you trying to educate? Are you trying to help? A lot like this webinar series and what we do with a lot of stuff on our site, our eBooks, et cetera, uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we are here to help guide and take care of the stuff for you. We have an incredible platform. That's a one-stop shop. All of this feeds into one platform that you just can interact with that platform on the go. And sort of get a birds of a bird's eye view and take care of all this stuff or be as a detailed as you want to get okay so we offer that but more importantly what you need to try to do and what we what we try to do here is offer just educate just educate okay, so whatever path you go you know obviously we want you to be a customer whatever path you take um, we want to try to educate and help and offer up free resources that are just gonna help your local business along its journey and its, and its online presence, regardless whether or not you're a customer of ours or not. You know, that we try to give our expertise out into the world. That's what you need to do. That's what really every business needs to do. If you're a roofer, if you're a plumber, if you're HVAC, if you're a dentist, if you're a lawyer, write blogs, make posts, images, little videos, you know, constantly be providing and educating your community. Be a part of that community because that's that's really what it's all about. Um, and then if you genuinely do that and you provide that and you try to educate and you try to help, that's just going to add more content to your site. And then the ones and zeros are going to come into play and it's going to pick up on that and it's going to promote your business more online. It's kind of that's the kind of the beauty of it if you're real if you're genuine if you're trying your best to educate and to help google is desperately uh works very very hard to make their uh, algorithm pick up on that and promote your business so just be real <laughs> in a certain aspect but really blogs photos videos content 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 and you promote it on all your channels all your social media uh, your your Facebook, et cetera. You have plenty of uh, pictures and, and videos in your Google business profile, but if they go to your website, they can find all of it. Okay, so the foundation to your house. Social media, all right. The big one, uh, <laughs> I know it sounds like the, I said the website was the big one, but for social media, I think a genuine, a consistently active social presence is the most time intensive component of our five building blocks more than any other online medium social is the ongoing conversation between your business and your local community okay so this is now you've made that content i just ranted about you're sharing it to the world here but this is the conversation this is the back and forth that is your social media so First and foremost, right at the top, be active. Like I just said about making content, it it, it bleeds it, it right into, fits very well into the very first point there, be active. Share and be on them. Maintain consistency and engagement. Uh, so limit the number of platforms to only the ones you can realistically sustain. Okay, so we, you know, when I mentioned right at the top of the very beginning of this, and I, I kind of flubbed it, uh, the point about you cannot be everywhere at once. You can't. You cannot be at every on every platform at once. So the good thing about having marketing automation in a platform like ours is if you have all your your social channels built into it, you can uh, you can get actionable data and you can see where your prospects and your community. But you know what platform are they on the most? Are they on Facebook the most? Okay, so then you you dedicate more of your time to Facebook. 
Um, you are a small growing business. You can't be in all of these platforms all the time. You need to find out where your people are and engage with them there. Uh, if you, you know, you look at giant, massive global corporations or giant companies here in the United States, um, they have a presence on every single platform. That's because they can employ people that just sit there and manage just Twitter or just LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. But you're a small growing business. Find out where your folks are and be there. Um, that comes right into show up for your audience. Share educational content. I talked a lot about that. Don't focus on followers or, or sending. Okay, so you're, you know, be genuine. Put it out there into the world like I like, like I was just talking about. Uh, be authentic. Um, we, we went over that. Be authentic with what you post and you write. Be genuine. Be real. Educate. You are an expert in your field. Show the world that. Optimize your social media with SEO best practices. It always comes back down. Uh, to the ones and zeros of it all. Um, so you can, uh, if you have a company or a good system and good marketing on them and all that stuff like us uh, in place, um, you know, then uh, a lot of the ones and zeros and the SEO best practices we can take care of for you. Um, but, uh, you know, all the best content in the world and all the best genuine love you want to give out into the world in terms of um you know who you are as a business and what your expertise is it can be all for naught if it's not set up appropriately with seo best practices so you just really always keep that in mind business listings business listings are the very the very first thing that we tell anybody listen a customer or not the very first thing that you need to do here's the truth to get better control of uh, your online presence is to claim your free business listings first and foremost claim maintain and be active on your google business profile formerly google my business that's the first thing you do before you even you know uh set up a, a demo with us or go do anything if you don't if you have not claimed your google business profile i i can't imagine like that's numero uno you have to do that okay but that's not the only one as 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 we keep uh saying you know there are certain areas you need to focus on more but you need to touch everything okay so it's not just google it's facebook in your business pro your business uh your local business um profile on facebook it's your yelp account it's Bing, and if you accurately maintain your Yelp and your Bing, then you're also going to show up on more of those voice searches, okay? So you're gonna show up on um, your Alexa, you're gonna show up on Cortana, etc. Complete your listings with consistent information. Uh, be accurate, okay? The same phone number on all business listings. Your website URL correctly displayed, your hours displayed, your address, everything, excuse me, everything is accurate and is consistent on every single platform. Don't set up one profile, then go to your Google business and you know change a bunch of stuff and have it be formatted and forget about your Yelp, okay? And not maintain it and not go back and update that. You have to be consistent everywhere on your site, on all your business listings, on all your social, on all your socials, Consistency is king. Proactively get new reviews to negate any one stars that will be posted. So when you have those positive customer interactions, you know, um, that's when you can reach out and, and you know, encourage them to leave you good reviews. Okay, you know, you're gonna be addressing your negative one stars, um, but you also want to make sure that your happy customers um, leave that feedback as well maintain and monitor your listings for consistency questions new reviews special offers etc um you are on the clock okay you you um that last point uh here's the most here's something you want to keep in mind typically and you should always try to respond to all your reviews within 24 hours. Okay, so that's that can be a lot. Sometimes things happen in life that can be easier said than done, absolutely. 
However, as a guide, always remember to aim for responding to all reviews, regardless of the score or feedback within 24 hours, not the 24 business hours, not the next business day, 24 hours, Monday through Sunday. Uh, and I know that's a lot. Sometimes it can be too much, um, but you, you always need to know that a 24 hour mark is there, whether it be good or bad, you should be shooting to respond to that review within 24 hours. Um, you know, you, that's why you kind of, uh, automation can be a massive benefit. You have a system, you plug in all your business listings, your socials uh, into one system, okay? And then it's sending you a notification when it's time for you to address a new review. Let's move from business listings into online advertising. So there is a lot to unpack here. We offer many on-demand webinars about this topic alone uh, that can speak to online advertising more in depth, as well as eBooks and blogs. Uh, so please be sure to check out the resources page on our website for more detail. All of those resources are free to you and on-demand. So, but let's touch on, just uh, try to do this briefly on the types of ads you can expect here in each category, because this of and of its own, you could do a whole we could dedicate a whole webinar series just to on online advertising. Search ads. So these are like your traditional Google ads, your, uh, the top search result that Google ads being the top search results for any Google search are almost always usually paid ads that show based on the targeted keywords. So when you type in a search into Google, you see the two uh, like Three result of three search results, two to three search results right there, and you'll see some text, and it'll be kind of catchy and call to action, and it has a little little indication right there that says add or they're colored. I think the background, the color is a little bit different, so those are paid. Okay, that depending on the search parameters, and you can buy ads based on the, the keywords that you want to target for your business and how your business stands out, as well as the you know combined with near me, your location, your zip code, etc. Okay, so these are these are this can also be if done appropriately, and if you you find true experts and you you employ someone such as our uh, company such as ourselves, then um, you can really have a lot of expertise into this. Because I can tell you, if you're not technically minded, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands to learn the the platform and get into it, do tons of YouTube videos and tutorials in itself, the uh, Google Ads platform you you log in, you create an account. It can be kind of overwhelming if you're not sort of in that mindset. And there are entire people who have built careers uh, for at least a couple of decades now on just, you know, optimizing that those Google ads. So that's something is something to keep in mind. It is it is pretty it can it can be very intensive, but it can also be a massive uh, benefit. It can be very efficient and you can. Um, end up you can get very targeted ready to buy prospects fed to you directly and you can do it um, your marketing spend can be much more efficient uh, so moving on to social ads so very much like the ads we just discussed in form and function but these are typically uh, so these are typically the same but but you pay for them on Facebook Twitter LinkedIn etc okay so the difference here is that these are exclusive to those social platforms so the leads um, uh, leads, those that complete the, the forms, uh, answer the call to action from your ads uh, are tied to a prospect's, to, are tied to that prospect's social media account based on where they are. So if they fill out a form on Facebook, it's tied to their Facebook profile. For most types of online ads, the ad directs prospects to your website where they fill out a contact form. So on a search ad, they click that link, it goes to your website where you've got a landing page all set up, you got your form all set up, and then they convert by filling out the form on that website for, for like a paid Facebook ad that's a built-in form. So they're, uh, they're clicking on that Facebook ad, they're saying, sure, I wanna learn more, and it's filling out that form with, your fa with their Facebook profile, and then Facebook's sending you that lead versus the lead going into your website from a search ad. Display ads, so these are these could be images, illustrations, or videos that you pay for placement on other websites or forms. Um, so kind of a little bit more like a traditional ad, but they click on whatever your piece of uh, content is, your, 
your banner image, your little video, et cetera, and then they, they go to your website and fill out a form. Retargeting ads, these are cool. So this is a form of paid online ad that targets individuals that showed interest in your business before, but maybe they didn't convert on a sale. So, you know, when you, the, the cookies and the tracking that's, um, that exists on their browser, um, maybe, uh, you know, the retargeting ads can say, these are people that uh, say, um, you know, on, like on, on Facebook, for example, you know, you can, you can retarget people that, uh, that looked around at your stuff before, but maybe didn't fill out the form. So you can do the retargeting ads and sort of try to, trying to get those people to convert. Uh, this is very much like um, something on, on Google, or I'm sorry, sorry, something on Facebook uh, specifically is the lookalike ad or the LAL ad. Uh, so that's a way to reach new people uh, who are likely to be interested in your business because they have similar characteristics to existing customers. So it's kind of like the retargeting ads, but these are people that haven't shown interest to your, um, your business before. These are people who, uh, based off of those who have converted, based off of those who have clicked on your ad and filled out your form, you know, the type of characteristics in their demographic and their profile on Facebook, the type of, you know, whether it be the location or the industry they're in, et cetera, a lookalike ad is targeting people that are more likely to convert. So there's a lot to unpack there and you can easily, we can easily get into a whole series on online advertising. Okay, um, we're getting to the end here. We're gonna start to wrap up, but um, one last thing we wanted to touch about was uh, the of the, uh, the five pillars we mentioned. You had email marketing, we added to that email and text messaging. So this is how you keep your customers informed um, and how you sort of continue the, your direct relationship and conversation with each person, each customer that comes through your um, your shop, your doors, et cetera. So you keep your customers informed and within reach during each stage of the customer journey with your business via email and text message. So with text messaging and email marketing updates, you can keep them constantly informed as a status. You can, so you can keep them informed as to the status of their product or service or order or what have you. You know, you send the text message reminders of when the appointment is gonna happen, when, you're, when your driver's on the way, when the order comes in, such and such is ready for pickup. You can view your invoice here. You can do all that through text messaging. And as well as you can solicit honest customer feedback and send reminders for an online review once the sale is done. So if they're happy, you automatically can go and click and send, you know, either a text message or an email. Please remember to, you know, fill out a review. With email marketing, you can keep prospects informed of your latest content, blogs, video, et cetera, and promotions. So when you have a new blog or a video, like we talked about, your genuine content you're putting out there into the world, you're broadcasting it on all your social media channels. Email marketing is just another one of those um, those avenues, and it's very intimate because you're sending you're sending a, a message to that individual. Even you know you're preparing an email and you're sending it out to all your prospects, and it it can be a very um, direct form of that. J just the same, you know, it's even if it's the same video that they find on their Facebook feed, et cetera. So uh, email marketing is just a, another way to keep all of those updates um, uh, collected, uh, put together, and to um, address your prospects individually. With text messaging, you can send appointment reminders like we discussed. You can send appointment reminders and status updates in the most convenient and direct method possible. I don't know about you folks, but you know, email, uh, you know, I personally, I'm a marketer, so I love email, email is fantastic, and it is still very vital, but, uh, you know, you, you, your email inbox can be pretty crowded, your social channels can be pretty crowded. Um, let's be real, text messaging is probably the most direct method of communication. So, um, luckily, our platform has built-in email marketing functions and now text messaging with our text and go function. You can send direct or automated text messages, excuse me, 
With our Text and Go built into our platform, you can send direct or automated text messages to prospects and customers. Okay, so you can go, you can send those review requests, those appointment reminders, all that stuff. You know, you, know, you ever sign up for a business? How would you like to be contacted? Email, text messaging, etc. All of them. Okay, so now uh, this, is, this is something we introduced uh, fairly recently, Text and Go. You can handle even the text messaging communications uh, uh, as well as everything else from our platform. So let's review. Uh, what are the main components getting found in 2023? Competition on Google has never been higher and it's just gonna get more and more competitive. Prioritize improving your ranking in the map pack in Google local search results. Run targeted paid ads to appear across all areas of Google search. Establish a consistent and accurate online presence. This is a necessity. Have a plan to build up your organic ranking over time. It's not gonna happen overnight. None of this is gonna happen overnight. This year in for the long haul, okay? You're always gonna be continually having to uh, feed the beast, so to speak. But uh, this is the point in our webinars, everybody, where I like to offer you your very own opportunity today to schedule your own session to see how an all-in-one business intelligence marketing software that uses AI learning not found anywhere else can give you complete visibility into your marketing, transparency of ROI, and make it really simple and easy to build your digital footprint and grow your business profitably. So I'm going to place a poll on screen. Do that. I'm going to do that right now. Pull. Here we go. And launch. Okay, so you should see that on your screen. Please let us know if you are interested in scheduling a one on one call with one of our subject matter experts after today's session. Or if you are watching this later on demand, you can request that one on one at any time by visiting our website, surefirelocal.com. Just click get a demo. And whether or not you are a new returning customer or uh, just a local uh, business owner um, out there in the world trying to live the dream, listen, folks, we're just thank you very much for coming by and spending time with us today. And I hope that uh, you were able to get something good and learn something to take away from it. So thank you very much. But uh, I'll give everybody a chance so they can let us know if they would like to chat and give you just a second to fill that out. Okay, already gonna close it up. I'm closing it up and we're going to go to the end and say thank you. It's that time again. Thank you all very much. A huge thank you uh, for all of you taking time out of your very busy uh, day and lives to spend it with us. Uh, we really hope that we're gonna see you back again soon. Um, on future webinars if you think of any questions after the fact or as you watch this replay later on on demand please don't hesitate to reach out you can send us an email at any time that is marketing at surefirelocal.com please remember to stop by our website we have a vast library of free resources that are available to you uh like to remind everyone again you are going to get an email with a link to this recorded presentation as well as all the slides okay in pdf so you're going to get everything don't worry after this um but uh yeah should you want more we have a ton of stuff and our resources page on the website it's free it's on demand check it out ebooks webinars uh all kinds of good things blogs but folks once again sadly we have to go that is a wrap we're going to see you all again very soon but everyone, please take care. All right. Bye-bye.